Hello everyone. Uh, welcome from my channel. I'm Dr. Shom uh, from Myanmar. It is also called Palmar. And I'm a physician who loves medicine a lot and who loves teaching a lot. And in this channel, I will upload there uh, some video about the important medical diseases uh, focusing on the pathophysiology and it will I hope my channel will have the easy memorization and easy understanding of the pathophysiology of the diseases including clinical features complications investigations and and I will manage to involve the updated management of the diseases okay so the first topic I choose to uh, I choose for my channel is hyperuricemia and gout. And as you all know, our hyperuricemia is a common problem in medical practice. It is associated with the uh, like uh, CBD rex factor, and so I choose this. And the pathophysiology and treatment is also uh, very interesting interested topic and so uh, so gout and in the pathophysiology 90% of the hyperuricemia and gout occurs due to the impaired renal excretion of the urea acid whereas 10% is due to the increased uh, synthesis or increased formation of the urea acid it may be from the dietary purines in one that of the cases and it may be from the de novo synthesis de novo synthesis from the dna and cellular breakdown okay so how does it come let's start with the dietary purine so which foods which diet are rich in the purine you know purine is the precursor of the uh Hyper uh, uric acid, acid, so diet rich in purine could lead to the hyperuricemia. So these drugs include some seafood, ketamine. It is uh, like rabbit or deer or uh, like that, and offal, red meat, beer, and high fructose contact could result in the. Uh, mm, Hyperuricemia. Okay, be how how does it cause, and so when you eat this, this uh diet, and it can go down into two two pathway. The first one is by the glucose phosphatase. It uh, it breaks down. It causes the transformation of this contact into the glucose, which will be used by the body. Okay, the second one is it will change into the uh, pentose sugar and through the PRPS enzyme it became PRPP you know and this PRPP will finally lead to the formation of uric acid okay and so in case if you have glucose phosphatase deficiency if you have glucose phosphatase deficiency and this diet will go down through this pathway because they cannot go down this so there will be more bando sugar more brpp formation it will lead to the sugar acid formation so glucose phosphatase deficiency is one of the risk factors for hyperuricemia okay another thing is that prbs mutation you know uh, it is the mutation it is the gain of function mutation gain of function that means that prbrs working very actively and it is the increased activity of the BRBS so more bando sugar will uh, transform into the BRBP which is the precursor for the urea acid so uh, glucose is phosphatase deficiency and BRBS gain of fashion mutation could lead to hyperuricemia it is through the dietary pathway okay another thing is the de novo synthesis or by the increased cell turnover you know PRBB will change in the inosine monophosphate and what are the other source for the inosine it is AMB adenine monophosphate
phosphate or GMB. Okay, where did they come from? EMB came from the DNA and GMB from the RNA. So in case if you have the increased cell lab breakdown, every cell has our DNA. Most of the cells have DNA. So in case if there is increased cell breakdown like uh, cell breakdown and turnover like leukemia, myeloproliferative disorder and the skin cell breakdown like psoriasis, it will lead to the increased release of the DNA into the blood and it will cause the increased formation of EMB and the EMB will finally lead to the uh, breakdown into the atene or if it is very EMB level become high, it will change into the inosine monophosphate. TMB also in the similar manner and so you know see monophosphate will change into the hyposanthine and then into the xanthine through the help of the xanthine oxidase and then all the, the xanthine oxidase also involved in this step and it will become sure acid okay uh, but there is a one step uh, that keep uh, hyposanthine that keep the negative feedback or negative uh, reuptake of the uh, hyposanthine uh, into this inosine by the HGBRT enzyme. HGBRT will change hyposanthine to inosine thereby reducing the formation of uric acid. And so, but in if it if you have the hypo HGBRT deficiency, you know HGBRT deficiency got the no no negative back no back pathway, so it will just go down, go down, and will lead to the formation of uric acid. Okay, so. What is HGBRT deficiency? It is seen in the Lichnihan syndrome. And why is she here? Lichnihan syndrome. Uh, it is the syndrome with the self mutilation, hyperuricemia, self harm, like that. Okay. So, in it, these are the breaks that are for the hyperuricemia, increased cell turnover diseases, gain of function mutation of BRBS and the deficiency of HGBRT and the deficiency of glucose phosphatase. Okay, whatever the cause, increase your SL form in our blood. And so it will break down into the alandrine, uh, which is the inner process, and it will be excreted by the kidney finally. And these are uh, these breakdown is uh, facilitated by the uricase enzyme. So uricase leads to the uh, reduction in the uric acid level by changing into the by breakdown into the alantrine. And um, but otherwise, uh, the uric acid itself will go through the GI excretion in one third of the cases and will excreted by the kidney in two third of the cases. So if the uric acid is becoming high, uh, they will go down the renal tubule and there is a there is a renal tubule tubule and it's the tubular cell and there is a uried uh, as a transporter in the tubular cell actually that the, the the transport here is quite uh, complex uh, but i draw the photo uh, i explain in the easiest way with only one transporter Okay, so UIAT will reuptake this uric acid from the renal tubule back into the blood, so will lead to the hyperuricemia. So these drugs facilitate the UIAT transport. So these drugs will cause increased reuptake of uric acid from urine. Urine that means the renal tubule and back into the blood causing hyperuricemia. These drugs include thiazide, furosemide, paracetamide, which is anti-TB, cyclosporin, and some chemicals like lead, alcohol, lactic acid, and aspirin. Aspirin is, um, aspirin has double action, and if aspirin is given in 150 mg to 3 gram per day, it has the hyperuricemic effect, but if aspirin is given in high dose more than 3 gram per day, it has uricosurate effect, that is that it inhibits the UID transport and it will cause the uric acid into the urine and so uricosurate effect, it has double action, okay. So these drugs causes the hyperuricemia and if the uh, renal tubule has been described, that's right in case of CKD, whatever the cause, and in case of CKD, there will be the uh, reduced EGFR formation and reduce uric acid will be there 
will go down through the urine and so CKD will also lead to the hyperuricemia whatever the cause okay and yes so uh, to summarize for the risk factor this includes the renal cause which is CKD and some drugs some drugs chemicals and aspirin and low dose and if uh, and the enzyme deficiency and dietary factors and increase the turnover diseases. So here is the deficit bowels about this. I think most of mo most I have explained most of the causes here. Okay. So let's go in, onto the clinical features and complications. So what will happen if there is an increased urea acid in the blood and it will cause the deposition in the joint if the urea acid are present in the excess amount it will deposit in the joint uh, but in the joint uh, the, according to the pH level in the joint it cannot dissolve in the urea acid acid form and so it have to be changed to the urate which is then combined with the sodium one atom of sodium and so what we call is the monosodium shurate crystals and uh, it will be deposited in the joint cavity and it is uh, seen as the negatively birefragile needle shaped crystals on the mi electron microscope when we examine the synovial fluid okay and when the when the monosodium urate crystals are deposited in the joint cavity it is uh, it is like a foreign body to the joint cavity synovial fluid and so inflammatory cells accumulate and to that's run this crystal and so inflammatory cell inflammatory cascade include neutrophy macrophage and their products like cytokines bradykinin and prostaglandin like that and so this bradykinin and prostaglandin would lead to the pain inflammation synovitis like this and interleukin one might cause fever so um in the acute gout one might suffer with the fever with the joint pain synovitis and like that okay so uh, at the same time are uh, that since because of the accumulation of the inflammatory markers uh it, there will be the ESR CRB will be increased and and uh, there will be then some neutrophilia in the uh blood blood picture okay and you can do that after in the chronic cases uh there will be the same distraction called pants out lesion pants out erosion and joint deformity on the joint a3 but it will not be visible on the earlier cases okay and the another thing is that so it is the clinical features of acute gout is the fever with the inflammatory arthritis and so in uh, late cases and as a complication, the urea acid, the more if there is an increased urea acid, more of the urea acid will come down through the renal tubule, and it might obstruct the, obstruct the, uh, renal tubule deposits in the renal tubule, so it might lead to the stone formation, and if the tubular fashion is impaired, it might lead to the CKD. So these two are also complication of the, uh, hyperuricemia and gout. So you can do KUB X-ray to detect the stone, ultrasound abdomen, and kidney fashion for CKD like urea creatinine electrolyze during REME examination. And yes, and so clinical features, acute features, inflammatory arthritis, and chronic features, joint erosion, and stone CKD as a complication. Okay, and uh, for the investigation, and you can do the serum urea acid level, which, which is in most cases, which is high. And you can do the, uh, the most definitive investigation here is synovial fluid analysis by microscopy, which will show the negatively birefragile needle shaped crystal. Inflammatory markers will be increased. And you can also do the joint A3 and to detect the complication, KUV, ultrasound, and kidney function. Okay, so our investigations, clinical features, complications, causes have been finished. And so let's go to the treatment. And if you have the acute gout, so bradykinin and prostaglandin, so uh, to reduce the prostaglandin formation, you can give, you can give the NSCID to relieve pain and reduce inflammation. And 
and steroids will also cause the reduced inflammatory cascade. It is then and also you can also give the steroids in the intraarticular or uh, injection or oral steroids. Okay, another thing is the cochicin. Cochicin inhibits the neutrophy assembly within the joint and so the one reduces the inflammation and the another drugs are that is the monoclonal antibody. It it, uh, it inhibits the interleukin one. It is the interleukin one antibody. What we call is the canakinumab. So for the acute attack of gout, we can use an SCID, steroids, cochicin, and and canakinumab. Okay, for the chronic gout to reduce the urs level, are uh, we can give the so we can inhibit that enzyme, which causes the urea acid, and we can increase this enzyme, which will break down the urea acid. We want to break down the urea acid into enough alandrine. And so we use the sandy oxidase inhibitor, ilopurinol and febusostep. Ilopurinol and febusostep, okay. For this enzyme, we want to increase this uric acid level because it will break down the urea acid. So we can use the recommended uric acid, whatever we call is the paclotigase, paclotigase, okay. Uh, so it interferes with the uric acid formation discretion. And another agent are the agent that inhibit the uric acid transporter, that is uricosuric agent. And this will inhibit the uric acid transport back into the blood and it will cause the more urea acid to go down through the urine and so these agents include propanesib, panspromaro. These are the uricosuric agent. Okay, so but uh, I need to describe more about in which of the cases which which are the indication for the urea acid lowering the therapy and how well how well we titrate the use of these ilopurinol, pepusostep, paclodigase, urea acid, and we, we don't give them uh, all, all in a single time. We have to titrate step by step. So I will discuss about it in that another lecture. Okay, so let's rewind. Uh, in today's lecture, I've explained about the pathophysiology and causes, and which will include the 90% is imperinate excretion in my way to do CKD or these drugs and chemicals. So it is the causes and that it is the imperinate excretion and increased synthesis by the diet from the diet or by the de novo synthesis to do the increased cell turnover and some enzyme deficiency, some enzyme gain of function mutation, enzyme deficiency. Okay, so it is the causes and the clinical features. In acute cases, there will be the acute inflammatory arthritis, and in chronic cases, and there will be the joint erosion and CKD and stone as a complication. And investigation, the bivalent investigation here is synovia fluid analysis, which will show the negatively pyrofragile needle shaped crystal. And another investigation, you can do the joint X ray, inflammatory markers, and um, urea acid level in the blood and KUB ultrasound kidney function to detect kidney involvement. Okay, for the treatment, acute treatment, we can give the NSCID, steroids, cochise, and canakinumab. And in the urea acid lowering therapy, we can give the sandy oxidase inhibitor, recommended uricase, and uricosuria agents. Okay, uh, I hope you would enjoy mine pleasure and see you again in next video.